Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Right, it's amazing how learning to properly use the Apple Pencil with an iPad can bring a ton of joy and efficiency to your day-to-day -day work. Apple Pencil productivity is a thing. There are a ton of hidden secrets for us to discover with this thing. For this video, I'm focusing on my second generation Apple Pencil. Most of the features will, of course, work on the original one. This has been around for a while now, since 2018. And whilst this hardware hasn't changed, the software features have come a long way. So if you've bought an iPad, an iPad Pro, or even the latest iPad Air, then these are the must-know Apple Pencil features that you might not know about to help you make the most of your iPad. So let's start here in Apple Notes, and this is the Pencil Kit. You tap on it in any apps that you see it's available to use the Apple Pencil, and it works across the system. Unless, of course, you have one of those programs like Procreate, Good Notes 5, where they use their own system, and trust me, you've got to go download those because they are brilliant with this thing. It's a great place to start though to explore the basics. The double tap. Now this is the obvious place within all of these features to start exploring extra functionality with your pencil. In GoodNotes 5, for example, just tap twice to jump between the last two selected tools. For example, to jump quickly between your pen and your eraser. It works across lots of apps from Apple Notes to Notability, so just give it a try. In the main settings on your iPad, go to Apple Pencil and you can select the functions you most want from switching between the last tools used to showing a color palette. More sketching tips a little bit later on. Next, annotating documents and handwriting shortcuts. One of my favorite functions and why I got the iPad in the first place was the ability to mark up screenshots and documents. So first of all, just swiping up from the bottom corner of the iPad with the Apple Pencil is a fast way to take a screenshot. It will then also allow you to seamlessly annotate it using markup. You can then draw over this using different tools and highlighters, it's super helpful. If you want to go a little bit Bit further with this though, remember that by using the full page toggle at the top of the browser, you can then capture the entire page. It will actually also allow you to then turn that document into a PDF. So I'm super pleased that my workflow is pretty much paper free these days, but it can make signing documents and contracts really annoying. In the markup tool, you can set yourself a reusable signature to insert that into documents as well and save it for later. If you are big on annotating documents, you could consider adding more markup functionality by importing the screen capture into a program like GoodNotes and annotating from there. And when you're writing or in something like Notes, it's also worth tapping on what you've written to see other intuitive shortcuts that are offered. For example, dates and times might open your calendar to insert one and phone numbers would allow you to go and directly dial them. It's these simple tools that can save us hours of time and make our day-to-day -day that little bit more enjoyable. And that's why I love partnering with today's sponsor, Skillshare. So listen, I'm currently working on designing some new shortcut icons and kind of template themes for iPads, Notion, that kind of stuff, that can offer some new ways to customize our home screens and workspaces. And Skillshare was the perfect place to upskill in the areas that I needed to to start this little business idea. So Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore creativity and personal growth on their own terms. So just searching for graphic design brought up some amazing classes on their platform like Edward Boatman's Icon Design Class or Jeff Staples, The Staples of Branding. Nice name. I could find all the fundamental skills and understanding I needed to start my collaboration with a graphic designer and take my business idea in the right direction. So if you have a specific skill you're trying to learn, Skillshare could be the perfect place to start. From productivity and entrepreneurship to creative writing, film and video, the whole shebang, you can find classes that will match your goals and interests. What's really cool is the first 1,000 better creating viewers to use the link in the description will get a full one month free trial of Skillshare. What are you waiting for? Next, quick capture. We need to touch on the lock screen quick note feature. I've mentioned this before on the channel, but just tapping on the lock screen with an Apple Pencil brings up notes directly. A really great way to quickly write something in a meeting or when you're on the go if you need to. To make sure you have this turned on, go to settings, then to notes, scroll down to access notes from lock screen. You can choose always create new note or resume last note if you prefer to keep, say, things in a single doc that you always use. 
Okay, this is a big one. Scribble and working with text. Scribble turned up a while back with iOS 14, I think it was. And Scribble means you can basically now write into text boxes and search bars or anywhere just using the Apple Pencil on the apps that support it. So writing into the search bar, or well, most input boxes, immediately turns that handwriting into text. And that is super handy. I love using it mid-workflow for adding new tasks to my Notion second brain, for example. And I just bring up Notion, select a new task, write it in, and come back to it later when I want to process it. Now, you could consider using Scribble in text apps like Drafts if you like handwriting ideas but want them turned into copyable text. To get the hang of Scribble, in Notes, go into the Pencil Kit and select Scribble. Now, you can select a single word by double-clicking it. You can select a whole line or paragraph with a triple tap. If you want to select multiple words in a specific area, you can either draw a line through them or circle them. To add and remove spaces between things, you can try either drawing a line between words to remove the space or between letters to add a space. Now a little wiggly line scratching something out over the text deletes it and if you want to add some text in a space just touch and hold the pencil on the space and wait for the grey area to appear and then you can write into it what you want and it will close around it again. Pretty cool. Now I think this lends itself beautifully to the act of journaling and having the best of both worlds. With a bit of practice, using the advanced Scribble features becomes really natural and can save a lot of time and add that human tactile benefit of, you know, pen to paper, that connection in your workflow. If you follow the channel, you might have seen my video on how I use Notion as a prompted stoic journal. Using Scribble has been amazing for getting the best of both worlds, the connected process of writing by hand, as you think, whilst linking my journal entries within a wider digital productivity system. So if this gets your juices flowing, check out my iPad and Notion journaling videos and templates I've linked below for more. Now, before we move on to some serious Apple Pencil time savers, a few of you have been asking me in the previous iPad videos I've put out how I got that custom look to my iPad. Now, it might surprise you just how much you can now do to customize the look and function of your iPad or iPhone's home screens. So please take a moment to sign up to my newsletter list below where I'll be sharing a full guide to customizing your Apple devices for beautiful and functional minimal aesthetics, along with a new minimal icon pack that will work across all your devices and even, yeah, your Notion workspace for those of you that love Notion. Early designs are looking super beautiful from the designer I'm working with and while you're there, a sub to the channel would be notable. Sorry, I, I stole that one from Mr. Who's the Boss. Moving on. Now this one's a beauty. Copy and paste between devices. Just make sure you are signed in on the same account. Select and copy the text on your iPad and then paste it on your phone. You can even do this with drawn content in notes by using the lasso tool. Select and hold, press copy, and then go to another device and repaste it. It's amazing. Now you also have the option to copy written notes on the iPad and then paste them as text, either on the same device or another linked in your account. Just tap on the selection, select copy as text, and then paste as usual. A super powerful iPad trick that is saving me so much time. So this next one surprised me. Did you know that you can easily add drawings directly in an email? Now I've been surprised how much I've actually used this now that I've discovered it, particularly for sharing quick ideas or diagrams with colleagues on collaborative projects. Using the Apple Pencil, you can compose and add a sketch within the Mail app. Open a new email, then hit the drawing icon on the bottom right. Use the markup tool you'll recognize from the notes and add it. Let's throw in a few more sketching tips. Now, drawing precise and straight lines can be done in a few ways, depending on the app you're in. In Notes and Markup, there is the option to draw a line and hold the Apple Pencil on the page to straighten it. If you want to be super precise, select the ruler from the toolbox and you can place that down and use a ruler like you normally would drawing along it. I love using this for annotating play scripts that I'm working on particularly. This also works for drawing shapes from triangles, to circles, stars, squares, the lot. Now don't forget, in drawing apps, the Apple Pencil is pressure and angle sensitive. So add more pressure to create a bigger, deeper mark and tilting it to the side creates a more shaded feel, much like those old soft HB pencils I used to draw with in school. Now keeping track of the Apple Pencil's battery life isn't always obvious, particularly with that first generation version. Now if you want a better battery reference, for your pencil's battery, add the batteries widget to your iPad. Go to the home screen, hold in select a new widget, search for batteries, 
and drop them in. Now, Apple claims you get around 30 minutes of use after just 15 seconds of charge, and a full charge is usually around 15 minutes. Two minutes will probably give you around about two hours, so it's pretty good. Now, of course, with the second generation, you can just drop it on top of the iPad magnetically and get a quick battery check like that. Right then, if you want to go further with organizing your life with great tech solutions, I recommend checking out the world of Notion Second Brain Productivity with me on this video, or check out the Mac accessories that can inspire your perfect minimal desk setup down there. Drop a like and a sub, and I'll see you on the next one.